How's it going guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse and I'm here with Elliot Heath, Product Line Manager at Nike. And today we're gonna be getting the exclusive first look of the newest next generation Nike Sprint Spike. We got the Nike Max Fly 2. Now the Max Fly really shook things up over the last four years in the Sprint Spike world. But let's go back to, I don't know, 10, last 20 years of Sprint Spike history. How have Sprint Spikes evolved and how did we eventually get to this shoe? Yeah, thanks, Connor. Uh, I mean, that's a long history to go through, but I think if you look at sprint athletes over over time, there's some things that have changed, but one thing that hasn't changed is that we're trying to serve the fastest, most explosive, powerful athletes in the world. And so it's always been rooted in asking them what they need. A lot of times sprint athletes have asked for more aggressive uh, pitch in their shoes, something that keeps them on their toes, never touching that heel to the ground, and really like trying to be as explosive and fast as they can down the track. So three or four years ago, the Max Fly changed all of that. When we went from a world where athletes were looking for less and less, just more stiffness, to a world in which we were trying to deliver more and more of the energy and the power the athletes were creating themselves, deliver that back to them. We figure that's one of their secret weapons. They're training all the, all the time to try to create more power. What if we could harness that and give that back to them? And what makes that uh, possible is the system of speed that comes to life in the Max Fly. Yeah, and that power really comes from the engine of the shoe. And when we look at Maxfly 2, there are some similarities to the past version, but it is all new. Can you guide us through the midsole and tell us about the magic? Yeah, like you say, we start with the engine of the shoe, and that's actually very similar to the first Maxfly. When we look at the updates to the Maxfly, it's all about harnessing that power. So at the core of that engine, a core of that system of speed, is the dual chambered air zoom units. You can see that even through the outsole plate where there is a smaller chamber on the lateral side of the shoe, a larger chamber on the inside. And what that does is it allows athletes to engage both of those, get energy return from both of them, but also create a little bit of stability. Athletes strike the track with uh, different foot strikes, oftentimes a little bit more on the lateral, and so they're able to hit into that first chamber and then transition over to the second chamber, which is really where all the energy storage comes from, but also a new stable platform as they go from lateral to medial. Built around that engine is a outsole plate that provides the traction. This time around, we'll get to in a second, is just the base of support system that really helps unlock the power. Uh, but then on top of that dual chambered air system is a full length carbon fiber fly plate. Those things together help create the system of speed of the Max Fly, really engaging and unlocking the power that the athletes are creating and returning it to them. And the carbon plate is obviously a hot topic right now. We saw it in the last version. Is this the same plate or have tweaks been made to further increase performance and stability? Yeah, so tweaks have been made to the carbon fiber plate. Uh, for Nike, that, that is a fly plate. What that stands for is a full length carbon fiber plate that's built in a contoured propulsive shape. All those things come together to create the fly plate. In this version specifically, that carbon fiber plate gets a little bit flatter through the, the forefoot, flatter in the sideways direction, not necessarily in the front to back, front to back direction. That flatter nature to it uh, changes the stiffness pro profile just slightly, but the bigger thing it does is create a, a more level support system for that air chamber underneath. So really leading to more stability. And we talked about that air chamber and the carbon plate, but you also can't forget about the foam. The foam is another big factor of the shoe. In some of the distance bikes, we see Zoom X. Sprint is a little bit different. Can you tell us about what the foam compound is in this shoe and why you use that? And it's a little bit different than those distance bikes. Exactly, so in sprint spikes like the Max Fly, uh, runners aren't, they're not touching the heel very much. They're, look, they're looking for all that energy storage and return, mostly in the forefoot. And when they look at the heel area where we do have some of that foam, they're looking for stability and durability and some traction. And so, like you mentioned in the Victory, we have a really high performing, highly responsive material back there, the Zoom, Zoom X material. In the Max Fly, it's actually a compression molded foam that's built a little bit firmer. That allows the athlete a little bit more stability, whether they're a sprinter or a hurdler. It helps them come down and have a really confident hit into the heel and then transition onto the forefoot. Energy return into the heel isn't something that sprinters are looking for as much. They're just looking for a sure surface. So that compression molded foam here, there's less of it, very thin amount, but it does provide that cushion in the heel for hurdlers uh, and also stability. Yeah, now we've talked about everything underneath the shoe really for that energy return, but let's go down to the very bottom, the outsole. Talk a little bit more about the traction story here because traction is so important for sprinters to feel locked in place and really 
allow them to get that power in their stride. How did you maximize that with this setup? Yeah, so when people look at the outsole plate of a spike, they're often thinking traction, and that is still the primary purpose of the outsole uh, plate here. But what we've taken a different approach to is how do you provide that traction, but then also really importantly for a shoe like the Maxfly, which is giving so much return, and actually athletes are running so fast around the turn, they want something that is more stable. And so we've built in a base of support system into this spike where you actually see the middle spike is removed from the Maxfly 1. There's only six on the outside. Uh, as well as this on the medial side of the shoe, there is a built up shelf. Ultimately, those things come together to create a flatter platform. If there was one thing that athletes really demanded or asked us about to improve in the Maxfly, it was the stability. They loved it for straightaway 100. It was really built like a drag race car to go super fast in a straight line. Uh, but what they demanded was, hey, I want to have that same feeling for going around the turn. I want more confidence there. So this space of support system and that flatter area throughout this right above the air chambers helps deliver more stability, confidence for the athletes going around the turn so they can feel just like they do on the straightaways going around the turn. And the spike pins, obviously, those are gonna offer a large amount of traction, but there's also secondary traction in this shoe. And it's a really unique execution that is a little bit different than what I've seen before. How did you guys go about designing this? Yeah, like you say, the spike pins themselves, those are the primary traction of the shoe. They're providing really the majority of it and you're really relying on those spike pins. Secondary or almost the safety factor when it comes to traction is that secondary traction. And if we felt like if we were putting material, if we were putting design onto this spike, that really meant uh, anything you're adding is a little extra weight. So we obsessed, where are we placing those secondary tractions? And if we are placing them, what sort of direction can they be in to maximize that traction based on an athlete's foot strike? So what you see here is actually a computationally designed pattern on the bottom that took data in from the lab to see where does the athlete need the extra traction, if any, in addition to those spike pins. And the directionality of it comes from the actual athlete's foot strike. Now, finishing the shoe off, wrapping it all together, let's go into the upper. It's a part of the shoe that maybe is a little bit heavier than on the distance spikes, but you need that for that lockdown. How did you guys execute the lightest upper while still getting that lockdown you need for power sprints? Absolutely, when you talk about sprinters, again, they're the most powerful and fastest athletes in the world. So going back to that stability concept and really unlocking and being able to handle this really powerful system, we talk a lot about that when it comes to the underfoot and what's delivered there, but going hand in hand with that is the upper. You need something on top of that really powerful system that conforms to your foot and really holds you in place. And so the new Maxfly upper, uh, it has some new yarns in it into this flyweave material. The flyweave material is really known, just like uh, other wovens, even seatbelts are kind of are, are like a woven type material where it's meant to be conforming, but also really stiff and not, not stretch as you put the power into it. And so those new yarns in the flyweave upper, they make it softer as well as more conforming to the foot, a total one-to-one -one fit of the foot so the foot's not moving inside. That ultimately unlocks comfort as well as unlocks the stability of the shoe in tandem with the bottom. Now, the Maxfly over the past few years has been one of our best-selling spikes, and so many athletes gravitate this shoe, to the shoe because of its performance. Can you tell us who exactly is this shoe for? Can any sprinter use this for any distance? What's gonna be kind of the um, ideal candidate for this shoe? Yeah, so the Maxfly is built to be our fastest sprint spike and short hurdles when we think of sprints. So when you look at the events from 100 to 400, inclusive of the 100 and 400 hurdles or 110 for the men, that's where the Maxfly is in its sweet spot. We have some athletes that are more on the more powerful side that do sometimes even take it to the 800, but this one is built in tune for the best athletes at those shorter sprints. We tested with athletes like Shakari Richardson and Dean Asher Smith, but then also up to like Rye Benjamin, uh, you know, one of the world's fastest at the 400 meter hurdles to make sure that it was really powerful and working for them in a straight line 100, all the way up to going around the turns really, really fast and over hurdles. Uh, it's built to be super versatile like that. Uh, and that's also one of the things that the Maxfly has changed the game on in terms of sprint, sprint spikes. As you talk about returning more energy to athletes, it's something that all athletes can benefit from the pros all the way down to that elite high school athlete who's really looking to be at their best. And you know, they're, they're striving to save those hundredths of seconds that can 
that can decide a state title or a regional or a national title. So it's really for all of those sprint athletes looking for that extra edge. Yeah. Well, every part of the Max Fly 2 has been so thoughtfully uh, designed for performance. You know, this is so important to get that extra tenth of a second. And while it still has the design inspiration from that last version, it is all new and it's built to be the fastest bike in the world. If you're looking to get the Nike Max Fly 2 on your own feet, you'll be able to find it here at Running Warehouse.